Sunday in the Good Old Days, narrated by Kristen Shaw. Before anyone wishes too hard trying to get time to stand still in its tracks, or even backtrack a bit, they should make sure, by looking realistically, if they really want to make time stop. For instance, just how many of today's rabid football fans of both sexes, and from 8 to 80 years old, would get through their first October or November Sunday afternoon without the customary two or more professional football games. They could read such primitive funny papers as the Cats and Jammer Kids with their inverted rhetoric, along with other comic strip characters such as Happy Hooligan, Crafty Old Foxy Grandpa, and the villainous Desperate Desmond, who always had the hero ready to be killed before being miraculously rescued in the final panel of a full page of separate drawings. It seems now like almost everyone went to church on Sunday morning, and even more attended Sunday school classes, both adults and children. They had been cleansed for that ritual by the customary Saturday night bath, which, for many townspeople, was actually enjoyed or endured, depending on the individual's viewpoint about such things, in the old-time corrugated wash tub. The Saturday night hot bath was such a ritualistic thing in its day that it caused the late Floyd H. Miller, the town's newspaper editor, to quip, Wonder how much of that religious feeling everyone has on Sunday morning is due to the Saturday night bath. There were alternatives to what things people could do on Sunday afternoon in those days, before everyone had to watch televised football or be excluded from all conversations for the following week. They could stroll up and down Main Street, still in Sunday clothes, of course, all afternoon. They could also walk through the parks and take snapshots of each other with their brownie cameras. On any given roll of six negatives, it was almost certain that the fish pond, known as Lake Winnetta, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, the fountain, or the old bandstand would be the background for at least half of the pictures. For many who worked hard at manual labor six full days a week, the climax of that precious day of rest, aside from going to church, was to walk down to the Waynesburg and Washington Railroad Station to watch the 4.25 p.m. train leave for Washington where those who worked or lived in Pittsburgh would transfer to the broad gauge train on the Panhandle Division of the Pennsylvania Railroad. When the last coach of the train swung around the curve at the foot of South Ritual Street and went out of sight, Sunday was over. Slowly the people would walk home, eat a light supper, and be in bed by 9 or 10 o'clock. Sandlot teams drew large crowds to the Golden Oaks Park near Rogersville when it was first opened, Later on, games started being played all over the county. Now, Sandlot baseball has withered almost completely away. It wasn't until Henry Ford perfected the Model T, also known as the Tin Lizzie, that all of the county residents were released from their front porch prisons on the weekends and other days of the week. And so, it seems when a person really thinks about it, expansion of industry won't take away the good old days image of Greene County and Waynesburg. Television, automobiles, and the radio have already changed life here as they have everywhere else from coast to coast. That's what makes it sure that if anyone does yell loud enough to get time to stand still in its tracks, they'll hope it's only for a fleeting glance at so many things that in reality were not so nice as they have lived in everyone's memories. When you get right down to it, old time Sundays were pretty boring. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the hit parade. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. And you knew where you were then. Girls were girls and men were men. Mister, we could use a man like Raymond Drew again. Didn't need no welfare states. 